attending tonight. I am David Sheffer. I am the Mayor Brown Robert Hel A. Hellman Professor of Law and the Director of the Center for International Human Rights here at Northwestern University uh, School of Law in Chicago. Uh, and we are meeting in the uh, Lincoln Hall of the law school, built right after World War I. Uh, this is a hall where many great things happen. Many great speeches are delivered. And I certainly am not delivering one of those great speeches tonight. Um, but we do have a very significant event occurring here tonight. It is a book launch of a very, very important book. And I'd like to um, uh, bring you into that story a little bit. Marcus Funk, the author of this book, returns to Lincoln Hall today, where he sat as a law student not that many years ago, to present to the world his pathbreaking book, Victims' Rights and Advocacy at the International Criminal Court. Now, I like to introduce pioneers, and I like to read pioneering documents and books. Today, we have both. Marcus works in the U.S. Department of Justice, specifically in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago. In fact, he received the Department's Attorney General's Award, the John Marshall Award, in 2008. That happens to be the Department of Justice's highest trial performance award. He earned it prosecuting the landmark mob murder racketeering conspiracy known as Operation Family Secrets. Now that is pioneering work and appropriate recognition for it. But for me, he's also a pioneer as a U.S. government employee who had the intelligence, foresight, and guts to research and write a very practical book about how to litigate before the International Criminal Court, in particular for the rights of victims of atrocity crimes. Legal representation of victims is a major feature of the International Criminal Court, and the sky's the limit on how it will evolve in the years ahead. The other pioneering aspect of this book, of course, is that it is the first to explain in great depth how to represent victims before the International Criminal Court. It does so by explaining the development of victims' rights under international law, the overall character of the International Criminal Court, the novel features of the Rome Statute and its rules of procedure and evidence that enable victim representation before the bar of the court, and then how to actually get the job done about victim representation. But neither those courts, uh, or ni neither of those courts, um, has had the benefit of such a rich discussion and practical advice as found in Marcus's book. I spent years uh, negotiating what was ultimately boiled down to a couple of provisions in the Rome Statute and a few more in the Rules of Procedure and Evidence on the matter of victims' rights. I'm very proud that it is an American lawyer and one who is an assistant U.S. attorney in this city and a graduate of this law school who has breathed life into our intentions of 12 years ago and explained how to achieve what we only hinted at in our drafting. Marcus, welcome back to Northwestern Law, and congratulations on a pathbreaking book that will guide many lawyers and instruct many others in the years ahead. And this is the book. It's published. <laughs> Let me, let me first thank, obviously, uh, David for his very kind words. Um, I must say, that I know we have a few of, uh, of, of David and Professor Sheffer's uh, students in, in, the, in our uh, midst here, and I've got to say that you, I think you're very lucky. No one can disagree with the notion of taking war criminals and bringing them to justice. I think it's impossible to disagree with that. And the rhetoric on both sides sometimes escalates. But the one, um, the one message that I, I, that I try to impart is that we also have to be a little bit critical, self-critical. Those of us who care about the court, care about victims of, of atrocities, and when we're talking about victims, we're talking about a lot of victims. You know, and since the, the Second World War, there have been, there are different estimates between 70, 170 million civilian victims in 250 or so conflicts. Uh, Professor Bassioni has some newer numbers. But that's an extraordinary number of victims. We're talking about four times more civilians killed than soldiers. And those of us who worked in environments where you see 
the direct victims, indirect victims of these kinds of crimes, because it does nothing more important than helping the people who've been harmed in this manner. And when we see uh, the court there, we should look at the court and say, how can we, all of us, I mean, many of you are lawyers, many of you are, are people involved in the business community, how can, what can we do to make a difference there? And by looking carefully at the court, and also holding people accountable, holding the court accountable, not just saying, hey, you're doing great things, you know, I'm not going to criticize you because you're doing great things or because for political reasons it's not um, a good idea to criticize the court. My personal view is that we should all get involved and learn about the court and see how can you improve the performance, how can you make it better for the victims of atrocity crimes. The 710 guys, it's Friday evening. I am entirely impressed at how many people showed out here. Marcus, this is a success for you. Um, I'd like everyone who is here tonight to give very serious thought and then action to buy Marcus's book. Uh, it's published by Oxford University Press, if not in hardback, when it comes out in paperback. Um, and um, I think you'll find it, uh, obviously for many of you, a very, very useful book. Uh, thanks to all the judges and other professionals who made it here this evening. I hope this is not the end of your Friday evening, but only the beginning. And Marcus, congratulations. We're so very proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.